Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. This is Mustafa Nasser from Arabic Phonons. Today's lesson is about letter Alif. This letter used to cause much headache for beginners because of its many shapes or forms. Today we will talk about the cases in which letter Alif becomes in the beginning of the word and in the upcoming lessons we will continue with the other cases. Before we start, don't forget to subscribe my channel, activate the bell, and download the PDF of this lesson from the link in the video description. I'm trying hard to provide you with many resources, so always check the video description. When letter Alif comes in the beginning of the word, it might come in one of these three shapes. First, with Hamza, whether this Hamza is on top or below the Alif. Second, with no Hamza, you will only see the Alif. And third, it may come like this. Now I will focus on these two shapes first, okay? The first one we used to call it Hamza to al qatta al qatta means cotton, okay? And the second one, we used to call it Hamza to al wasl or Alif al wasl Wasl means connecting. So this one, cotton, this one, connecting. And I will explain why we call them that in a minute. Now, I want to differentiate between these two alifs or these two hamza by giving you some examples. Let's begin. Okay, here I have four examples for each one. Let's try them. Ahmed, A, Ahmed. Ibrahim, E, Ibrahim, Ukile, U, Ukile, N, A, N. Okay, let's now move to Hamza to Wasl. Ism, E, Ism, El Qamar, A, El Qamar, Istamala. E استعمل اكتب او اكتب okay as we can see whenever we start reading from the alif itself whether it's hamzatu qat or hamzatu wasl in both cases it will be obvious we pronounce it okay and i have two notes to mention here first this one the alif with hamza, hamza tul qatta. Whenever this one is labeled with fatha or dhamma, the hamza will be on top of alif. As you can see here, is labeled with dhamma, so the hamza is on top. Here is labeled with fatha, the hamza is on top. But if it's labeled with kasra, the hamza will move below the alif, like here. Ibrahim, e. Okay? And the second note I want to mention regarding Hamza to Wasl. Whenever Hamza to Wasl comes in the beginning of the word, the second letter must be consonant. So it must be labeled with sukun. As you can see, this one is consonant. This one, consonant, consonant, consonant. Okay, this is a must. So we can conclude that whenever we start from the alif, whether it's Hamza to Waslu or Qata, in both cases, it will be obvious. We will read it. Now, I want to start reading from before. So, I will add one conjunction before each word of those, which is Wa means and. Okay, let's add it. Now, let's read them again. Wa Ahmed. Wa A Ahmed. وإبراهيم وأكيلا وأن. So as you can see, in case of Hamza to القطع, it's also obvious in this case. So whether we start from before or from the letter alif itself, in both cases it will be obvious. We will read it. Okay. Now let's try Hamza to الوصل. Focus now. وسم وسم والقمر والقمر واستعمل واستعمل واكتب 
واكتب as you can see we didn't read this alif we didn't read hamza to wasl it is silent so it's only obvious whenever we start reading from alif itself but in case we start reading from before it will become silent that's why we call it the connecting why because it it's connecting between what's before the alif and what's after whenever i read this one i make a jump from letter wa into letter sa so this one is silent i said was was i didn't say wa ism no was well well so that's why we call it hamzatu al wasl wasl means connecting because we connected what's before with what's after but this one we call it hamzatu al qata qat means cutting because it's cutting it's make a barrier between what's before and what's after this one where a you must read this one okay what about the cases in which we will see this hamzatu al wasl and the other cases in which we will identify or we will see hamzatu al qata i want to start by listing the, the cases of hamzatu al wasl first okay these are the cases in which we will see hamzatu wasl in the beginning of the word hamzatu wasl which is letter alif with no hamza as you can see here let me start with prepositions in prepositions there is only one single preposition that begins with hamzatu wasl the remaining prepositions that begin with letter alif it will be the other type hamzatu qata and this only preposition is the definite article al in arabic and i give you example al qamar the moon so once we add this one al qamar it will be only obvious in pronunciation whenever we start from it a al qamar but if we start reading from before well qamar it become silent it will become silent okay and here i want to stop here and link this part with the previous lesson when we talked about allamu shamsiyah and allamu al qamariyah we said there is two behavior if the letter begins with one of the loner letters al huruf al qamariyah like this one qamar and then we add L, the definite article, nothing will happen. On the other hand, if the word starts with or begins with one of the solar letters, al huruf al shamsiyya the behavior will change like this one. al shams What will happen here? First, this first letter will be duplicated. We will add shadda here. And second, this lamb will be silent okay we agreed that this one this alif is alif wasl or hamzat wasl ashams ashams because this one is silent the lamb is silent i jumped from here to little share ash ashams okay now let's try to add something before again whenever we add something before this Hamza, it will also become silent, right? Like here. So in this case, we will jump from here direct to letter she. Wash, wash, wash shams. Okay. So you have to take note of this of the difference between alam al shamsiyya and alam al qamariyya. Once we add, this is only happening. Once we add the definite article to any word. Okay, what about nouns? What are the cases in which we will see Hamza to al wasl in, in the beginning of a noun? First, the 10 names. There are 10 names in Arabic that begins with Hamza to al wasl. And all other nouns that begins with Alif will be the other type, Hamza to al qat Only 10 names that begins with hamzatu al-wasl let me write them down 
These are the 10 names that begins with Hamzatu al Wasl. Ism means a name or a noun. Ibn, a son. Ibnum, also a son. Ibnah, a daughter. Imru means a person or a man. Imra'ah, a woman. Ithnan, this is the number two, but for masculine. Ithnan. Ithnatan, the number two, but for feminine. Ayman, it's used for swearing when you are swearing with God. And lastly, ist, it means a pace or a foundation. Let's move now to the second type of noun that contains Hamzatu was. Second, the infinitive of quintable verb. What is quintable verb? Al fi'lu al khumasi. It is a verb that contains five letters. How can we know the number of letters a verb contains? Just get the past of this verb and then count. Let's take an example. This verb, ijtama'a. This is a verb in the past means mit. It is the best of the verb meet. Is Let's count. One, two, three, four, five letters. So this is a quintable verb. Fi'lun khumasi. He said the infinitive. Okay, before we jump to the infinitive, this is a past. Even the past, as you can see, begins with Hamzatu wasl. I wrote it down here with the verbs. The past of quintable verb, it also contains Hamzatu wasl. Okay, what about the infinitive? What is the infinitive in Arabic? The infinitive or al masdar is a noun from which this verb is extracted. This is the noun. Ijtima' means meeting. So the infinitive itself contains or begins with Hamzatu wasl. What about the, sec the, the third thing about quintable verbs is the command. The command verb. Whenever I give you an order, fi'lu al-amr, ijtama'a, this meet, ijtama'a. Ijtama'a means meet, is a command. Whenever I give you a command, ijtama'a, meet with someone, okay? Ijtama'a, okay? Ijtama'a. So, three of them, as you can see, contain hamzatu wasl. The past of quintable verb, ijtama'a. The command of quintable verb, ijtama'a. And also the infinitive of quintable verb, ijtama'a. And because infinitive is a noun, I wrote it here under nouns. Ijtama'a, ijtama'a, ijtama'a. And the same pattern goes with hiksa verb, al-fi'lu al-sudasi. Al-fi'l al-sudasi or hiksa verb is a verb that contains six letters. How can we know the number of letters? Get the past. Like this example. Istaqbala. This is a past verb means received. It is the past of the verb receive. Okay, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. It has six letters. So it's a hiksa verb or fi'l al-sudasi. The same we did with quintable verb is going here. First, the past. The past of hexa verb. As you can see, it contains hamza to wasl. Second, the command. If I want to give you a command, receive. Istaqbil is the command of this one, receive. If I'm giving you a command, go and receive. Okay, and lastly, the infinitive, al-masdar. Again, al-masdar or infinitive in Arabic is, is a noun. Is a noun from which this verb is extracted. The, uh, the infinitive of this one is istiqbal, receive. So the past of hiksa verb istaqbala. The command of hiksa verb istaqbil. And also the infinitive of hiksa verb istiqbal. Istaqbala, istaqbil, istaqbal. Three of them contain 
Hamza to wasl in the beginning. Okay? The last thing, these two we already covered them. The last thing we have is the command of triple verb. Let's see it. Sometimes a triple verb doesn't have Hamza or Alif originally in the verb. That's why I wrote here no Hamza. Doesn't have Hamza. Like this verb. Ketebe. Ketebe. This is a best verb means wrote. It is the best of the verb write. Ketebe. This is a triple verb. Why? Count. One, two, three. It has only three letters. So it's a triple verb. And as you can see, there is no Hamza here. Hamza, it's not here originally. Or Alif, it's not here originally. But whenever we want to get the command verb of this one, we will add it. Katabe, uk, tub. Write. If I'm giving you a command, write your homework. Okay? Uk, tub. Okay? As you can see, the Alif appears here. So, the triple verb, which is originally doesn't have Hamza, sometimes when I get the command of this verb, the Hamza will show up. And this Hamza is Hamza to Wasl. As you can see, there is no Hamza here. It's only the Alif. Another example, Shari Ba. Drank. It is the past of verb drink. Sha-ri-ba. Okay, as you can see, there is no alif here. But whenever I want to get the command of this verb, it will appear. Ishrab. Ishrab. Drink. Drink your water. Ishrab. Okay, so the triple verb which is originally doesn't have alif, when we get the command, some verbs, it will get alif, okay? So these are the cases in which we will see Hamzatu al-wasl in the beginning of a word. Let's now move to Hamzatu al-qata. Okay, these are the cases in which we will see alif Hamzatu qata in the beginning of a word. First, in prepositions. All prepositions that begin with letter alif it will be letter Hamzatul Qata, okay? Except for the one we saw in the other type, L, the definite article. So let me give you some examples of some prepositions that begin with Hamzatul Al Qata. These are some examples of prepositions that begin with Hamzatul Al Qata. Either, an, illa, and ajal, okay? Second, the nouns. Again, all nouns that begin with letter alif, it's hamzatu qata. You will see it alif with hamza, okay? Except for the three cases we have already covered with hamzatu al wasl. Let me give you again some examples of nouns that begin with hamzatu qata. Ahmed, we already covered this one. Ahmed, Ismail, What again? Any one. Ihsan. And so on. Now let's move to the verbs. We have three cases here for verbs that begin with Hamza to Al-Qat. First, the triple verb, the past of the triple verb. But in this case, Hamza is original. Unlike the last case we talked about. Okay, let's take an example. Okay, this is a triple verb in the past, means eight. It is the past of the verb eat. This is a triple verb. How can we know? Just count. One, two, three. It has three, three letters. So it's a triple verb. And as you can see, it originally has Hamza, and this Hamza is Hamza to Qatar. How do we know it's Hamza to Qatar? Because it contains Hamza. If this Hamza is not there, so it is the other type, Hamzatul Wasl or Aliful Wasl, okay? So the second one, quadruple verb, the past and the command of quadruple verb, al fi'l al which contains four letters. Let's see an example. Okay, this verb, Akmala, this is a quadruple verb, fi'l al 
because it contains four letters. One, two, three, four. Okay, this one means completed. It is the best of the verb complete. Okay, ek mele. So the past of quadruple verb begins with hamzatu qata a ek mele. And also the command of quadruple verb. Let's get the command of this one ek mele. So it will be the same ek mil. The same word, but the difference uh, in the label. Ek mil means complete. Complete your work. Okay, I'm giving you a command. So the past and the command of quadruple verb al fi'l rubai begin with hamzatu qatta. Okay. Let's now move to the last type of verbs that contain hamzatu qatta, and this is the only present. We call it alif. Of present alifu al mudara. Sometimes the letter itself or, or the verb itself doesn't have hamza or doesn't have a. But whenever we want to conjugate this verb with the pronoun I, we will add what we call alif of present hamzatu al mudara. So it's not originally in the verb. We will have to add it. Okay, and this is the only case we will deal with present. We dealt with Past and command, past and command, and the infinitive of the verb. This is the only case we will deal with present. Let me give you an example. The verb yashrab, yashrab is present, means drinks. Okay, if I want to conjugate this one with I, I want to say I drink. So I will replace this ye with a. E. Ashrab. Okay, so I add it a. This a letter alif is hamzatu qata because it has hamza. Okay, it's not originally there as I told you. Originally, the verb sharibe, three letters sharibe. I hope now the difference between these two types of hamza is clear. Remain one type of hamza that comes in the beginning of a word. Let me give you uh, this example. This is the third shape we have today. It looks like this. A shape that doesn't look like a Hamza. And this one, whenever you see it, it means it's a combination between two A letters or Alif. The first one is labeled with Fatha, while the second one is consonant, labeled with Sukun. So instead of writing them like this, We will just combine them and write it like this, okay? And what about the pronunciation of this one? How can we pronounce it? We pronounce it as double A sound. A, not only A, A. There is a little stretch, A. Let's have an example. A mene, A mene, believed, is a verb. A mene, okay? And a second one. Amel. Amel. We can even see it in the middle of a word. Like Munshaet. Munshaet. Okay. So I hope now the difference between Hamzatul Qatar and Hamzatul Wasl is clear by now because many beginners used to confuse between both of them. In the upcoming lessons, we will continue our discussion about letter alif. Don't forget to subscribe my channel and download the PDF of this lecture from the link in the video description. See you soon.